So this video covers the US Chess morning membership events from the tournament director perspective. This video covers from start to finish. So this is creation of the club on chess.com, all the way through a TLA, um, creating registration, collecting those registrations, communicating with the players, um, running the actual event, and eventually submitting it for rating on US Chess. So there's a couple of things we need to run over very quickly. This is a basic online event. This is about as basic as online events should be. Um, the server does the pairings. Um, so that makes life, you know, there's no US chess pairing software involved and you're manually entering those pairings into the online server or anything like that. We just let the server run everything for us. Um, and it has minimum TD interaction, meaning um, we're gonna let the server determine fair play algorithms and things. Uh, there is some TD work involved in that as well, but there's no player cameras. We don't set people up in Zoom meetings or anything along those lines. Um, there are some needs um, that you will have um, to run these events. You need definitely an online server. Um, you need registration software and um, tournament director software to be able to submit the rating report. Um, so you'll also need a US chess affiliate and a be a certified tournament director or you'll need a certified tournament director. I do not cover how to go about those um, in this video, uh, but the difference between an affiliate and a certified TD, the affiliate is more the organizer. So you'll need, you'll see in the video, the US Chess Federation is the affiliate or the organizer for these events. And I myself am the certified tournament director. Those are two separate entities. A lot of cases that person is one and the same. So for instance, I also own my own affiliate so I can run my own events, but I'm also a certified TD. So it's okay to be the same person, but you will need both of those. Um, also, the online server I'm using for these events is chess.com. Uh, I'm using events for chess as my registration software. And I'm also using SwissSys, uh, which has a nice feature with chess.com that brings in the ID numbers for some of the players. Um, and that allows me to submit the events for US chess rating very easily. Um, I'm also gonna use Microsoft Office. So I use Word, Excel, and Outlook. Um, I, you'll see I have a lot of communication with the players um, and I use mail merges and I track the entries in Excel. Um, so it makes life much easier to be able to do this. And then uh, this is not a user guide for how to use all this software. So you'll see I quickly run through the processes and steps involved. Obviously you can pause the video and you can replay the video, but I'm not gonna teach you how to use Word. I'm not gonna teach you how to use Excel. Um, you know, I'm definitely not gonna teach you a lot of things with this. Um, some things are taken for granted that you sort of know or can go and find out how to do these things. Um, you'll see with some of the steps I follow that it will be helpful and you'll be able to follow them, but it's not intended to be a complete software user guide uh, for these events. So that's everything uh, that I need to go over. Hopefully you enjoy the video and you learn a lot from it and you'll be able to run your own online events. And so the first thing we're going to do is go to chess.com. Um, if you type chess.com, it will bring up this page and we're gonna create a club to run our event. The reason why we have a club is so that we can control um, who participates in our event and then we can set up tournaments within the club. So if you go to connect and go to clubs, uh, you'll see there's a list of clubs and you can search for other clubs. But up here, there's a button called create a club and you're gonna hit that create a club. It's gonna ask you for some information. Uh, I'm gonna click it, click it right now. Um, you'll fill out this information and create the club and what you will end up with uh, if I go back to the clubs page and click on the US Chess Membership Events Club is you'll end up with this page that just gives you some information. Um, you won't have, you'll see I've got information here. You won't have anything filled in here. We're gonna come back and complete all that information after we've done the registration side and filled out the TLA. Um, but what you will need is this link. So whatever your club was called, it will have a link. Uh, make sure you get that link uh, and you have access to your club because we're going to use that in the registration aspect of the tournament. 
So the next step I'm going to walk you through is creating a registration form for the event. And I highly recommend some of the online registration services out there. I use events for chess for the US chess morning membership events. I find the system very simple to use and hopefully uh, having run through the event set up here and later on when we grab the registrations, you'll see how easy it is. So I'm going to go to my administrative portal here, click on events and I'm gonna create an event. This will be the first event, um, the morning membership event that we're creating for this particular event. I'm gonna leave it in work. Um, you'll, you'll see the reason why I don't set it to live just yet. Uh, we'll come back and do that uh, the later stage. I'm gonna set it to national because anyone in the country can participate in this if they have a US Chess membership. Uh, the sponsor for this event is US Chess Federation. They're the folks that uh, we're running it on behalf. And the event name, I'm going to call the US Chess Morning Membership Event. And this one is specifically on Friday, November 6th. So this is the event we're talking about here. And we're going to run through all the process for that event. Event type is Blitz. And we're going to select chess.com here because that's the hosting platform that we're running the event on. Time zone, I'm going to switch that to Eastern. Uh, we know the event is on November 6th, so I'm going to select November 6th. And the event start date is actually 11 a.m. Eastern. Oops, and so let's make sure we change that to a.m. And the event finishes on November 6th, and it finishes at 12 p.m., which is noon. And repeat daily, it does it, you know, if you had various different dates in here, you could repeat the same event daily. We don't need to do that right now. I'm going to punch in my name here, Chris Bird, and my Christopher.bird at uschess.org, which is the official email for the address, uh, for the event. Um, I don't have a flyer for the event. Uh, if you had a flyer, so you could put that in here. Now, the event URL, I will have an event URL, but I'm not going to put that in right now because I'm going to do that after I've created the online TLA but I also wanna have the registration link set up before I create the TLA. So everything sort of links into each other. There's just a way to do that. So if I go ahead and hit create, there you see it has one in work event. So now that we have the event created, what we need to do in events for chess is create a registration form uh, that's linked to the event. So we're gonna click on the in work events you see here's the event that we created uh, for November 6th. And here it it's gonna tell you to create registration form. So we're gonna hit go on that and it's gonna pop up the actual event and we're gonna create a registration form. We're just gonna basically work down these uh, details one by one. So over here we have some registration details. We've gotta give it a registration close date. Now what I do for my events is I have the registration close one hour prior to the actual event. Now, I'm gonna actually select November 5th, uh, which is the day before. I'm gonna to move to 11 a.m., uh, 10 a.m., which is one hour prior. And then actually we're gonna select November 6th. Um, so the system won't actually let you select a date and time that's ahead of the event, obviously, but we'll let you select something prior. So we've got the cutoff now as November 6th at 10 a.m. And there's no additional event fee. We are going to have an entry fee of $5, but you'll see where I put that here now is in the section. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a section. Each event needs a section, uh, even if it's just one section, uh, like we have for these events. So we're going to call this event um, the open section because I have one open section. And yes, we're going to check to say that it is rated. Um, so the event is rated and that opens up some other options on the US Chess membership side of things. Uh, the initial entry fee is gonna be $5 for this event. Um, and here you see there are some increases. So say if you had an entry fee um, you know, of $50, but then after a certain date it went up $20 and you know, and so on and so on, you, could, you can do that through here. And then also you can set rating limits based on the US Chess um, ratings or age limits based on data births, etc. So there are plenty of options here. Mine's very simple. Everybody goes into the open section for the morning membership events and it's $5 entry fee. So I'm going to hit create. 
Now you see we've got one open section and then we're going to deal with some of the other details here on the form. So the schedule, well the schedule, I have all the details for my event. You haven't seen them yet, but I do have them. We'll, we're going to run through that through the TLA, but I know all about my event. So it starts at 11 a.m. Four rounds starting as soon as the previous round finishes and chess.com is going to be the thing that uh, pairs them for me. The time control for my events is going to be game in five minutes plus two second increment. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, and buys, we don't allow any buys. So I've got those disabled uh, for this event. So there are no buys. You can't do buys with the US chess um, on chess.com using their Swiss system. The, it, the event just gets paired as is. Now here's some, uh, these are the fields that will display on the registration form. So you'll see US Chess ID raid and expiration date. You can't really do a lot with them because that's why I selected the event was raided. So it's gonna collect the Chess ID and I'll show you the registration form once we've finished so you can see what it means. Um, there is no service fee for this, so I'm just gonna hide that. Um, and the only thing I want to collect actually is a contact email. So I'm gonna make sure that that is on there um, and I'm gonna require that so that I can get in touch with the players who are entering the events um, and, and you know, they will be, be forced to enter an email and you'll see why that's important because when I send them confirmation emails, um, try and get in touch with them, I need to be able to get hold of them and via, via email is the way to do it. Uh, we're going to check just through some of the other things here, uh, the additional preferences, um, on-site registration, I'm going to disable that, it's an online event, I'm not going to have any on-site registration. So um, event notes and terms. Well, I do, I don't have any particular event notes and terms, but if you had anything, um, you could throw them in there. But I do have some customizations. So what I have on the customizations is I want to collect the chess.com username. And I'm going to do that via a custom field. So I'm going to create a custom field, hit go, and it's going to ask me for the field name. So my field name is chess.com username and make it something that's very helpful and then I'm gonna put some little help text here um, that I already have from the previous one um, I'm gonna put this is your chess.com username Oops, put a space in there that will be required to verify your request to join the US chess morning membership events club on chess.com and at this stage I don't put the link to the chess club um, on there yet um, they're gonna get that once they've finished registering uh, for the event and you'll see where we do that in a second so I'm gonna hit create so that gave me a custom field now chess.com username is right here and of course if I need to edit that I can I can do so and then we're gonna come down here uh, we're just gonna leave section and supervisor here um, as they were and then on the registration confirmation. So this is text that will be sent to the uh, players that register um, And here I have some little verbiage um, that just explains now um, So once they registered and they get the confirmation it will give them the link that we to the club that we created on chess.com And uh, so they can go there and request to join the club So the club I don't have it open. I have it set to private people have to request to join the club what they do is they send a request to join. Um, I make sure that they're registered. And if they have registered, obviously I approve their request so that they can play in the tournament. And you'll see there's some other details here. You can play stats promptly. If you disconnect, you won't be able to rejoin. Late join is allowed, but no buys can be given. Just some small details. So you're limited on the number of characters on here. We're gonna put more details into the tournament life announcement, the online TLA. Um, and that's going to be our next stage once we finish with the registration form. So we're going to hit create and that is our registration form. Now you see they're both here in this section here, which means they're not live yet. And I'm just not going to make them live yet because we need just one detail from the online TLA to go into the event. And then we'll come back and set these to live um, as soon as we've done that. So the next step I'm going to work you through is um, doing an online TLA for the event so we can advertise the event on chess.com. And you'll see I'm already logged in here to my dashboard. So I'm going to go to my dashboard 
on um, uschess.org. And here you can see it tells me all about myself. And I'm going to go find my authorized affiliates. Now I'm going to run this. The US Chess Federation is the affiliate that's going to run this event. Um, you're going to see me click on a different affiliate right now. Um, the US Chess Federation one won't let me do online TLAs. So I do the online advertising via my own affiliate. Of course, you will need an affiliate um, to be linked to your membership to be able to create an online TLA. And if you come down here, you'll see tournament life announcements and you'll see some previous ones that I did here for the morning membership events for each month. So I'm going to go to submit a tournament. And we're going to go into the submission of the tournament here. And um, the name of the event is US Chess Morning Membership Event on chess.com. You see, I had one previously. I'm going to do this one, obviously, for the November events. So I'm going to run events on November 6th, 13th, and the 20th every Friday. But if you were just doing one event, obviously, you wouldn't have to put um, anything date related into there. So where should this TLA appear? So this TLA is going to be online only. And is this an online event? Yes, it is. Uh, it's not any of these other things here. Um, so the frequency. So we're going to select something a little different for the frequency. Uh, it's weekly. Right. And the first day of our event is November 6th. And it's going to be on a Friday. And we're going to select a date that it ends. So the last one for November is actually going to be November 20th because we're not going to run one on Thanksgiving week. So name of event location. I just put uh, for that. I put online at chess.com. And you'll see it fills some things in here for me automatically because that's what I did. Um, actually, this is going to change. I'm going to put a physical address in for this. Uh, because the online registration system doesn't like um, online at chess.com. It likes an actual address that it can find. Uh, so I'm going to put the US Chess um, office here in Tennessee. I'm going to select Tennessee, zip code 38555. There are no Grand Prix points, number of sections. Well, we just have one section. It's not FIDE rated. It's not any of these other. The name of the organizer is the US Chess Federation. So I'm going to put US Chess Federation. Uh, and I'm going to put my email address in here because um, I'm, I'm the one looking after it. Uh, my phone number uh, for work is 931-787-4123. So if anyone needs to contact me, you can do that. Uh, and I'm not going to put a website address because the only thing we're going to have is the TLA. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the majority of all of my information, um, all of the regulations and everything in this additional event information. And I'm actually going to copy and paste uh, from a previous one, but I'm going to run through some of the information. So here we have a registration link. Um, now you see I've got eventsforchess.com slash US Chess. This is a generic link that Events for Chess was able to give me for any event that's run with the US Chess sponsorship um, logo. If I go into events for chess and I'm going to quickly sign in here and let me just get in. What we need is the URL for that event that we went ahead and created. So remember, it's still in work here. So we're going to go in work and we're going to just click on the event. And here it brings up the details of the event. Uh, no, it says, you know, we, we haven't made it live yet, so no one can register it. But this is going to be the URL that you want to copy and paste up here and put into your tournament life announcement so people know where, where to go and register. And then also there's some other information that I include in this. So I have the registration cutoff deadline, the format of the event, uh, the time control, gaming fight, you know, the start time, the entry fee, some more information about how to you know what you do to join on chess.com um, the prize structure um, I even do live coverage so I actually live stream because you don't have to do anything like that and the anti-cheating um, fair play measures that we have in effect for this so we you know chess.com uses their fair screen procedure and also you know as a tournament director I'm allowed to run through that stuff and then that's it so we're not doing any print, so we don't have to do anything else. 
And this is basically going to allow us to submit an online TLA. We're gonna hit submit and that shoots it off sending for approval to the US Chess office. And you'll see it gives us a link here. So it says they're gonna review and approve it. And what this link is up here is this is the information that I wanted to add to the events for chess event before I went live with the event. So I'm gonna copy that information and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to go to my account and go back to my events. And here I have the in work event. And I'm just gonna edit the event. And remember down here we had event URL. I'm gonna paste the link to the online TLA right there. I'm also, just for the fun of it, going to add a quick, um, if I can find it, a quick image and upload that because I have a rated US Chess online rated play image for my uh, thing. It makes events for chess look pretty cool. And now that I'm happy with this, I'm actually gonna set it to live. So I'm gonna set that to live and then we're gonna update. But the other thing we need to remember here on events for chess is that Remember, you've got to edit the registration. So the registration here is in work too. We're gonna to come and edit the registration. And now we're gonna actually set that to live. And this will allow us to start taking registrations for these events. You see, I'm not gonna change any of the details. I'm gonna to go to update. That's live. And we're gonna check that is live. You see, we have three live registrations now. So if we click on that, You'll see I've got the event here. Nobody's entered it yet, which is good. We're just gonna quickly run through and have a look at the registration form. You'll see now these links are all open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just check it out, register. You see it's logged in as me, but I'm gonna enter my US Chess ID number. So most people won't get this, they'll just get this. They'll enter US Chess ID number. And the cool thing about events for chess is it will populate all of their rating information, their expiration date, make sure they're eligible for the dates of the event, things like that. We confirm that, and then um, obviously they're gonna select the open. This is where they add their chess.com username. And this is where they add their contact email. Um, they're gonna go through, run through, hit continue. They're gonna be taken to a payment screen where they'll go ahead and make their payment and they'll be registered for the event. So now that we have the tournament registration set up, we're accepting entries, there's a couple of little things we need to do. We're gonna deal with a lot of communication to the players. I think communication is very important. We're gonna send them some information on the tournament, but first we've gotta create that information. And one of the things we need is to set the tournament up on chess.com. So to do that, we're gonna go actually just go into the live chess system. So here it is, and I'm gonna go to tournaments and here I'm gonna hit the plus on create a club tournament. So our tournaments are Swiss. This is the morning membership event, November 6th. That's the way I uh, write everything down. Gotta make sure I get the right club. So if you're in multiple clubs, make sure that you get the right club. Uh, so this is the membership events. It's gonna be standard chess. My time control for these events is five plus two, so I need a custom one, as five plus two is not in the options. Uh, as we know, the event is gonna be on Friday, November 6th. And I'm actually, even though the event starts at 11 o'clock, I'm gonna set it to 11.01, just to allow any last minute procrastinators to ensure to get in. Uh, there's no rating uh, limits on my section, and it's a four round event. So once we do that, hit create, and you'll see the tournament is up here. And I found the best way to get to that information is if I go to clubs and my US Chess Morning Membership event, now you can see here's the event and there's a little copy link button here and we're gonna take that information and use utilize that information in the communication that we send to the players about the event. So as I was saying, communication is very key. So now I'm gonna send an email to everybody who has entered a registered in the event we're going to send an email saying thanks for your registration and here are all the steps necessary 
that you need to take to basically participate in the event. Communication is key. You'll see I send various emails throughout the uh, run up to the tournament to make sure that people can get in. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull the participants that have entered the event from Events for Chess. And so I'm gonna pull up my live registrations and you'll see Friday, November 6th here. And the number of participants we have now is eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export those participants. So I'm gonna hit export and hit go. And that's gonna take me to this other field here where I can select which ones I want to, which fields I want to basically drag over to my spreadsheet so I can utilize that to create a mail merge basically from Microsoft Office using Word, Excel, and Outlook to send them all um, an email about the tournament. So I normally take all the information except for section, paid, and fee. And then we're gonna hit export on that, and that will bring us into a spreadsheet. So here's the export from Events for Chess, and this is how it looks inside Excel once it comes over. Now you'll see we've got everyone's name, their US Chess ID, their US Chess rating, expiration date. I do have a contact email address hidden in here, and their chess.com username. What I'm going to quickly do is sort this by date created. And now the reason I do that is so that when I get new entries, um, you'll see later on that I take the entries from the bottom and keep adding them to my list. So I think it's important to sort them by the date that the entries come in. And now I'm actually gonna take the information here, I'm gonna copy that, and now I'm gonna paste that into a pre-formatted spreadsheet that I use for my mail merge. So here's my pre-formatted spreadsheet that I have from previous events. You see I've got it November 6th here as a sheet. I'm just gonna paste the information in that we copied from the export from Events for Chess. It's sorted by date created, which is when the entry came in. Um, so I know that these are people right now that I need to deal with. I don't have anything filled in over here. You'll see I fill this in, but this information is now set up and ready to utilize in our mail merge to send to people our little tournament information email. So now that we've got the information from our mail merge into the spreadsheet, we're actually going to Microsoft Word and format the email that we're gonna to send to people. So Microsoft Word here in this mailing section has a good feature where you can use a spreadsheet to capture information and then you can automatically send all of this information um, just using one Word document, the same email to everyone. But you'll see here I've got some field names um, and this way it sort of personalizes the email to the players. So here you can go to start mail merge and go to email messages, um, which I've already done. I'm gonna select the recipients. So we're gonna use the November 6th um, list that we created. So there's November 6th. And then also what I'm gonna do is edit the recipient list really quickly and move to sent and hit blanks. And the reason I do this is because I put something in that field once I've sent them this sort of welcome email, uh, given them these instructions. So that way, when I get new registrations and I add them to the spreadsheet, I don't email the same folks again. Um, the other thing you can do is, um, when these are where you pull in the field, so this is the first name, um, and here's um, the chess.com username, and then also you can preview the results. So dear Rob, and his username is manonfire underscore J-E-R, and so on right through all of them. And if we go to the very end, you'll see we've got the eight um, registrations that we have so far for our initial mail merge. We're gonna go ahead and send this email. So send email messages. As you can see, it has the same subject line from what I used last time. So I'm just gonna change that. So you can keep using the same information from event to event. Just make sure you obviously change the chess.com link um, to whatever the new live link is. Remember we created the event um, just a few minutes ago. 
And so we make sure that this link is up to date. We make sure the information is uh, relevant. So we change this to Friday, November 6th. And now we're gonna go ahead and shoot these messages. And you see it ran through them all. And now we have eight email messages that are sent. The only other thing to remember is make sure you have Microsoft Outlook open. So this all works with the Microsoft suite of tools. So Outlook, Excel, and Microsoft Word. If you don't have Outlook open at the time when you hit send, it will actually just put them into your Outbox um, and it will send them the next time you actually open Outlook and get into the system. So once we have the initial welcome email sent to those people who are registered, we need to keep on top of the registrations as they come in and continually send those welcome emails to new players. So I'm in events for chess, I've logged in and I can go to live registrations and see my event here for Friday, November 6th. And you'll see now we've got 12 active participants. So that's four new entries. We had eight the first time we checked and sent the initial welcome email. So I'm gonna export participants. We're just gonna take all 12 and I'm gonna remove again the fields that I don't need and we're gonna export that information. And once that exports, that will bring us into this here where we have the email, we have all 12 participants. Now we know we had eight participants in the first email. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is if I sort this by date created, oops, date created, and hit okay, that will sort them by the date that they were entered into the registration system. This allows me to take the players that we haven't already had, which are these four players here, copy that information, and we're gonna copy that into the um, spreadsheet that we use for the mail merge. Um, so that brings up this spreadsheet here, which is the nicely formatted version. And we're gonna paste that information in here. Now, one thing you'll notice, I've got a sent column here, and these folks are now marked as yes. These are all the players that I sent the initial welcome email to. And now we need to send it to these four players. As you can see, this is blank. And if you remember, I set up the mail merge to select only players where this column is blank to send the new email to. So as you can see, I brought up the Word document here, which is our same welcome email that we sent to the initial eight players. And because it's set to just pull the players where the sent column is blank, we can check this. Uh, if we just go to preview results in the mailings menu here, uh, you see the first player here and we can check the number of people that we have and you can see there's only four of them. So we're gonna go ahead and send those email messages so that those players have the welcome information and they get all the chess.com information they need to join the tournament. So the next step we're going to cover is managing the registrations that we have and the chess.com club. What we need are these players to ensure that they are in the chess.com club so they can play in the tournament. Since we just sent these guys the emails, we're gonna set that to yes. And then the next thing we're gonna do, which would be useful, is I'm gonna take all these players really quickly and sort this by chess.com username. This will put the chess.com username in alphabetical order that will help us with the chess.com club. So if we pop over to the club, we'll see, um, let me pull up the club itself clubs, US chess membership events. And if we go to members, you'll see here we have a list of members that are going to be able to play in the next event. We have pending requests here. These will be players that have joined the tournament and then they got your information to come and join the club. And so you'll have pending requests in here and you'll be able to cross-reference these to the spreadsheet and see whether they've joined the club. Now what I do is I use the same club for all of my events. That means some of these people in here, you see we've got 23 members, um, I'm included in that count. We know we only have 12 registrations, so we really want this to have no more than um, those 12 people who are gonna play in the tournament. The problem with leaving other people in the tournament or in the club that have not registered for the event is there's no way within chess.com to stop them from participating if they're in the club. So you set up a tournament for the club, anybody who's a member of that club can go ahead and participate in the tournament. So as you know, we set our spreadsheet to alphabetical order 
And what we're really going to do is use this and we're going to set this to alphabetical audit as well, which will allow us to quickly work down the list and see who's meant to be in the club and who's not meant to be in the club. So I'm going to cross reference this to our spreadsheet really quick. And as you can see, AB4GM and Ash 2013 are members of the club. So we're going to go back to chess.com and we've got AB4GM and Ash 2013. They're okay. I'm going to move down to me. I'm okay. The next one I'm going to check is Bruce Hedman. Is Bruce Hedman a registered player in the club? Yes, he is. And the other thing I'm going to do is just for my reference, I'm just going to make a note of the people that have joined the club. Um, that's just for my benefit only, um, just to keep track of things. So what we're going to do is continuously move between the two and see. So I know E4D6 win was in the club. And then we have Ethan Chessman 666. So we're going to run back to the spreadsheet and basically follow this. Now you see Ethan Chessman 666 is not in the club. So what we have to do, and this sounds pretty brutal, but within chess.com, we have to go to action and kick him out. And it tells us you the Etherman Chess 666 has been removed from the club. And it brings us back to the top, so now we have to keep checking. So the next one here is Flash DLG. Is Flash DLG registered for our event? I don't see Flash DLG registered for our event, so we're going to go ahead and kick him out. And this is a continual process that you're going to do, um, or that I have to do, to make sure that all the people who are registered in my event are really playing. So now that I've worked through everyone who's in the club, and you see here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in the club, we can verify that against the chess.com count. So if you see here, it tells me now I've got 10 members. So that's nine plus me is 10. So the other thing we do is pending requests. So we have one pending request in here from Ezra T. We need to check and make sure that Ezra T has in fact registered for the event. And we see that Ezra T has in fact registered. So we're gonna just add him to the club here, go back here, we're gonna take Ezra T and we're gonna approve that request. And as you get players that are receiving your welcome email or receiving the club information, they're gonna to apply to join the chess.com club. So you just need to keep on top of that and keep adding players as they come in so that they're aware of anything that's going on with the tournament. And once they're in the club, they'll actually be able to join the tournament uh, once it begins. Okay, so now that we've been keeping on top of the registrations and sending the welcome email, it is time for the event. We are just past the registration cutoff. So this is the time where I send another email to the players. This one's slightly different. Just giving all the players that are registered another um, sort of basic email on how to join the tournament and this is a good thing to do this is one of the reasons why i have to cut off one hour prior is to give me time to do all this so as you can see we are up to 16 uh registrations active participants and if i show you the spreadsheet the running spreadsheet that i keep you'll see it's got 16 but we have um three people here who have not joined the club yet so this is a good way to uh, ping people, make sure that they join the club um, and you know deal with any issues. So let's go now to here. You can see uh, we've got 14 members in the club and we have um, you know me as well. So that's 13. So that matches everything we have. So let's go ahead and switch over to the email that we're going to send. And this is basically a more basic one than our welcome email. This is a th simple three-step process on how to join the tournament. So they log into chess.com, they join the club, um, and then they join the tournament. And you will see, um, actually, I need to set my recipient. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to set this to, um, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to make sure I have the November 6th event pulled up. And then this link here 
we need to make sure it is the length for the tournament. So remember, if we go to our club, and if we go to the starting page here, we have the tournament and we can copy the link from here. So I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go into Word and paste that link right into here. So now this is definitely the instructions to join today's event. I'm gonna check, we have 16 people now. So now I'm gonna send those email messages. And this is basically a reminder, um, event starts soon. So it starts within the next uh, hour, you know, within the hour, which is when they can actually get in and go and join the chess.com club and get in to join the tournament. So now that we've sent another email to all the players and players should be joining the club um, and getting in, the next thing we have to do is actually monitor the tournament. So the tournament has started. It starts up to one hour prior. Um, people can register. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna go to live chess. Now, um, we're gonna open up the live chess uh, viewer and here you can see what I see in live chess. And then we're gonna go to tournaments and here you see our tournament. It starts in 40 something minutes. Um, and I'm gonna actually join that tournament here. I'm not gonna join join because that would mean I would play in it. I'm gonna go into the tournament. Now you'll see there's no chat box here or anything. What I need to do is be able to see the chat so I can liaise with the players. You see some players have already started joining. So we've got six of the 16 here. If I hit refresh, uh, magically the tournament chat comes up. And so what I'm gonna do is say, good morning, everyone. And be basically from now until the tournament starts, I'm available via email, via phone, via chess.com to assist players with any issue. So a lot of the players that are playing in these tournaments have already played in a few of them. They know the process by now of getting into the club, joining the tournament, etc. Um, you obviously if you're having new players it might be a new experience for everyone it seems simple on paper what to do uh, but with experience you some people do find it um, technically difficult to do that depending on how they're gonna play on chess.com as well so my job from now uh, because I'm not taking new registrations so I won't have to monitor new registrations coming in um, that's you know another reason for the one hour cutoff is now I can just concentrate on the players that have registered and helping them get into the tournament. And like I said, I do that via sitting in the tournament here in chess.com, by monitoring the members, like if new members come in, uh, we know we've got three members that need to join the club. Um, once they join, I can come here and join the club and get them up and running. Um, and so they can join the tournament. Uh, but from this point on, it's just a question of waiting until uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, which is in about 40 minutes or so uh, for the tournament to begin. Okay, so we are about 10 minutes away from the start of the event. You see 12 minutes up here. And what I like to do um, prior to that is, as you can see, we've only got 12 people in the event. We know we've got 16 people registered. Uh, people are talking to me here, I've been answering them and um, politely just getting along with all the players uh, in the chat. And so what we're going to do right now, um, you'll see there's the spreadsheet and we have 15 players in the club um, and one person still hasn't managed to join the club. I think they're having some technical issues. So we're gonna try and resolve that uh, by sending another email. Yes, I have um, another email and this one is basically is a last reminder to the people to join the club. Remember, I had to change the link here um, to the new link. Um, make sure that you're, um, the people that you're selecting is for this um, event. I'm gonna, uh, as you can see, I'm sending it to all 16 players. We still got some, some people are in, so it, it doesn't relate to them. But for those that haven't managed to join the club or get in the tournament yet, this is like a last reminder. And as it says, last reminder, chess.com event starting soon. So I'm going to hit send on that and as you can see it works through and sends that email to all 16 players. Um, so then it's a question of going back to chess.com 
Um, and the good thing about chess.com is, as you can see, here are the members, and it will actually give you a notification up here when someone wants to do something or join the club. So even by sitting in this screen, I can see when I get the notification and it pops up. But hopefully, by the time we start in 10 minutes, now that I've sent out a last reminder, we'll get everyone to join in. The other thing I like to do is I'm going to copy this. And as part of the club, um, you can post a note here. So um, tournament starts in about 10 minutes. Please join us up. Um, post the link in the note. So this note goes out to at least the 15 players that are already in the club uh, here in members and it will just give them a jolt that they've got 10 minutes to get into the tournament. So as you can see we've got 12 right now. Hopefully by the time the tournament starts we'll have all 16 um, in the club and in the tournament. So as you can see now um, We've ended up with 14 players right now. We've still got the ability for two more players to join. They registered for the tournament. Uh, I'm not sure why. With all the emails and everything I've sent, um, not sure why they're not able to do it. Just sometimes, technically, people can't work out how to join the club and then get in the tournament. So the tournament is going to start with, looks like 14 players. At least I know one more is in the club. Uh, they can always join up until the start. And they actually have the ability to late join as well um, anytime up until the last round of the event so this is a four round tournament and so we're going to get to see the start here uh, and what will happen is as soon as it starts chess.com will automatically pair these folks together um, so here are the games you'll see everyone with a chess board here means that they've been paired and as long as everyone stays connected uh, that should be good uh, we can actually go and watch some of the games so if i go over here uh, you'll see i get the game one thing I like to do is just stay in the tournament chat um, rather than um, you know stay in the in the chat for the game, which would be over here. I like to stay in the tournament chat in case there are any issues. So you can go ahead and watch the games. Um, also, you can just sit in here and obviously watch the standings. Uh, you'll see when people late join or anything like that. But as long as you're here um, watching the event, you're doing your job as a tournament director. Hopefully you can um, any answer any issues that go on throughout the event and that should be the event should just run by itself um, until the tournament has finished and then obviously once the tournament is done um, we will deal with any prizes that you have to give or anything along those lines. You let chess.com do its fair play review um, as a tournament director you'll do a review and once that's done the next stage is submitting the rating report. Okay, so we've just finished the tournament on chess.com and here you can see I was actually doing a live broadcast of that. I'm not going to show you how to work through all that stuff. That's just uh, extraneous stuff that is you know, not related to the management of the event at all. But you see, we ended up with 14 players out of the 16. So I'll work with the other two players who never managed to participate and uh, probably refund them. Um, and you have to do that through PayPal. Uh, rather than events for chess. So, um, you know, all the money for events for chess is taken via PayPal. Um, so, you know, issue those, if you're gonna issue a refund uh, through, uh, you feel it was deserved, then obviously do that. Um, so you'll see the tournament happened. Um, it's all um, here, the results are all here. Uh, the next step is for us to wait a few days for the chess.com fair play review to take place. And obviously as a tournament director, if you receive complaints or you need to do your own review, um, you should do that. Uh, but the next step after we uh, are convinced everything was playing above board is to do the US chess uh, rating, port for, rating report for the event and get everything finalized. So of course, keeping in line with the good communication practices we have, we're gonna send a thank you email to those players who participated. And here you see I have the, um, I've amended the uh, information to include the prizes that were won, um, the live stream that I did and some other stuff where they can view the cross table and also where they can register for future events. Very important to keep in touch and provide that, that information. And also you can see here on the spreadsheet um, that I was keeping for the event, 
I've added the prizes here. And then I've got another column here called thanks and no. Um, these two players never managed to participate in the event. So I, I don't see the point in sending them a thank you. Um, but it is uh, obviously good to keep in touch with them and you have to work with these guys to work out uh, what happened and potentially refund them as well. So um, the mail merge again uh, is set up to um, make sure we don't send this to um, anyone who has no in that thank you column. So let me go over to the word. So the mail merge is set to um, not be sent to anyone who has a no in that thank you column. So again, we're talking, uh, we just double double check here. We've got 14 players. Um, so this is, um, and of course we've got it. So it looks like it's uh, sending an email um, to customize to each player. So it has their first name in here. So I'm gonna hit send email messages here. And the subject line says, thank you for participating in the event. Um, we're going to shoot that email and because we've got Outlook open. That email is now sent. So to do the rating report, we're going to utilize chess.com and a new feature in Swiss this that came out a few months ago um, relating to them coming up with their members' um, IDs. So it cross-references the chess.com username with their US chess ID. So what we need to do is go into the club and if we hit live tournaments, um, this will actually give us a list of all the previous tournaments that have taken place. This is the event we want, the morning membership event from November 6th. And what I'm going to do is if I click on this download results button, this is going to open up um, a spreadsheet that looks like this. And we're not going to do anything right now with that spreadsheet. We're just going to close it off and we're going to open up our file explorer and there in the downloads you can see the spreadsheet and I'm actually going to throw that into my Swiss Sys events folder. So now it's in here, uh, the event for November 6th and I haven't touched the spreadsheet, just left it as is, as was downloaded by chess.com. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Swiss Sys. And you'll see I'm using actually, uh, I especially did this for, for this video. I'm using the unregistered version, which is a free version of Swiss Sys. So you can use it for this uh, process for free. Uh, obviously, it's appreciated that you do purchase a Swiss Sys uh, registration, should you use it often enough. But I'm just going to hit that and open up Swiss Sys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the spreadsheet file. Uh, which is a CSV, and just open that in Swiss Sys. And it gives a reminder that you can use this new online tournament uh, assistant feature. And you'll see it's got the usernames. Uh, well, it's actually the, the names that are on their chess.com accounts. Um, and it brought in the cross table. Now, if I click in one of these and show you the details for Zuriab, in the email address here, this is the chess.com username that we're going to use to look up all the usernames. So I'm going to hit OK there. And now what I'm going to do is if I go to Internet and Online Tournament Assistant, and it gives you some things about purchasing a license again, we're going to download lookup table from chess.com. And what this is, it's all the people um, here it gives chess.com username and USCF IDs and this is a list of people that have signed up for the US Chess members only club on chess.com. I'm going to close that off and what I'm basically going to do if I go back to my downloads you'll see it's got this data file I'm going to drag that over into my events file here so I have everything in the same place I'm going to go back into Swiss this it tells me it's ready to load ID numbers and here I'm going to browse and go to my Swiss's events and choose this data file. And then I'm going to look up the USCF ID numbers for this section. So it tells me it's found most of them except for two. So what we're going to do right now is uh, look up those missing two. And what you can see is you see where it puts a US chess ID number in now for uh, this user. And it also made the name match um, whatever's in that database too. So the next thing we need to do is obviously find 
the USCF ID for these people that we don't um, have an ID in here. And for this, I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet that I created um, to track the tournament where it has all their names and everything. And here um, you'll see we have chess.com username and USCF ID. So if I click in here, I can see that the username is Lichmaster. I'm basically going to find Lichmaster, copy his ID, and paste that into there. You don't need any of this other information, just the US Chess ID. I'm going to save that. We're going to come down here. So this one is Vale. We're going to find him, find his USCF ID number, and pop that in there. So once we've done that, we basically have a Swiss file that is practically, but not yet, ready to submit um, to US Chess for rating. The last thing we have to do is we have to make sure that all of these games are eligible to be rated. Now, what do I mean by that is if at least one move wasn't played by both players in a game, it shouldn't be submitted for rating. And sometimes on chess.com, people forfeit their games. You know, you'll have white plays e4 and no black moves, or you'll have no moves because white disconnected or some reason the game didn't happen. So how do we check that? Well, if we go back to the event page here on chess.com, the next button to our little download results is download games. I'm gonna go ahead and download that. And we're gonna open that using my um, chess based program of choice here. And you'll see, I can look at the games. Now here are all the games that took place and here are all the moves at a glance. So I see there were moves in every single game, which means all of these games are to be rated. If you had one where it was just one E4 and then no more moves, uh, you would basically go back into Swiss and you would adjust that game to be an unplayed game, you know, a buy, whatever you wanted for tournament purposes, but it should not be rated. So now it looks like our Swiss file is ready to be submitted for US chess rating. And you would do this in the normal way. Um, I'm gonna go to utilities, rating report, and US chess. And here we get some details. So um, it doesn't have enough characters for what I normally call it. So morning membership event. And I usually call it whatever the date of the event is. As you can see, it doesn't fit in. So I'm gonna switch this to 11.6 because that's when the date of the tournament was. And here I've got the affiliate ID is the US Chess Federation and myself in as the tournament um, director. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna save it in this same events folder. Uh, I call the section here open. And we know that the time control was gaming five plus two. Swiss, regular, not Grand Prix. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna check in our folder here that we have these three files and these three files here are what we're going to upload into the US chess rating system. So now that we have the three files um, that we need to upload into the US chess um, rating system, how do we get to where we need to be? So you can go a couple of ways. You can go to uh, TD affiliate support area here in the ratings dropdown, or now you can just click on my dashboard. Um, so just make sure that you're logged in, obviously, as a tournament director. Here you'll see all my details. And this was run under the US Chess Federation. So I need to go down here. These are my authorized affiliates that I'm allowed to submit events for as a tournament director. And this one was run under the US Chess Federation. I'm going to click on this. It's going to take me into that affiliate. And here are some affiliate actions on the right hand side. We're going to go to tournament rating reports. And this will bring up uh, a different screen here. And you'll see this, if you're used to submitting rating reports, uh, US Chess, you'll be very familiar with this screen. So this is where we're gonna upload these three files that we just created. Now I like to call this something relevant. So it's a morning membership event, 2020, and it was held November 6th. And then if I hit this, I'm gonna go to documents, Swiss this, and events. And here I can see the files I need. So the first one is the TD export. The next one is the TH export. 
and the next one is the TS export. Now the rest of this information you don't have to fill in apart from the fact it is an online event. However, I like to just throw my US Chess ID in here and I also like to throw in the time control even though I already have it in my section. Now I'm going to hit upload tournament data and you see it takes me to another screen that tells me uh, all files were present and gives you some weird error messages if there are any. Uh, but basically, it tells me everything was good here. And so I'm going to return to the upload, enter, edit, rating report files because we need to do some more things within there. So it takes you back to this blank screen and you might think nothing's going on up here. But if you look down here, it tells me this event is unvalidated. So what we have to do is get this event through validation process so that we can eventually submit it for rating. So I'm going to hit edit tournament. And now this brings me into another screen where um, basically it's all of the tournament information. So if I scroll down here, you'll see some things highlighted in yellow that we need to take care of. So it's got some of the data that it brought in from SwissSys. And then here it's got all the players with their ID numbers and the cross table from chess.com. Everything looks pretty good here, but I do need to change some details and I will let you know the system is a little finicky. I'm using it in Chrome. Um, I found that Firefox is actually the best uh, browser to utilize uh, this rating system with. I'm not quite sure why, but maybe we'll uh, come across some of these errors. So anyway, I'm going to change the date of this to November 6th, 2020, because that's when the tournament was. Uh, no TLO. Even though I did submit an online TLA, you all saw me do that uh, back at the beginning of the video. Um, I had to do that using my own affiliate because uh, there's an issue doing that with the US Chess Federation affiliate. So you can definitely say online only TLA and select the TLA that you chose to submit the event with. I'm going to select this was non-scholastic. And the other thing that we should do is make sure all the details came across correctly. So yes, it was held on a Friday, November 6th. That's me as the chief TD. The section name is open. The section information is correct. Uh, the time control is correct. It was a Swiss. It was online. It's going to use blitz rated online ratings. That all looks wonderful. And then obviously it's got the US chess information details. And what I recommend you do is you hit save. It's going to save that information and hopefully maintain it. Um, I've had it where it didn't quite maintain the information um, and even goes back um, after validation. But you've got to just play around with this uh, a little bit, but everything should run uh, hopefully uh, perfectly for you. So I'm going to look back through the information. Now it's got this non TLA. Um, it will let me know if I have any issues with any players. Uh, once I do the validation. So if there's certain players that overperformed or underperformed, it wants you to double check that those are indeed the correct players for the event um, and everything through here. So I'm just gonna make sure that it maintained the name that I asked for, it did. So now it looks like everything is good. I'm ready to try and validate this event. So let's see what happens when we hit validate. Um, so as you can see, it's thinking about doing something and it should come back to the same screen that you were on, except it will give you a tournament validation report. So here you see um, the validation report eventually came in, gives me some other information. Now it says the status, one warning and one alert. And I can go ahead and see this validation report. I'm gonna open that up and see now, the finicky thing here is, if you look at the status here, it says no errors or warnings. So um, even though it said that there was an error or a potential warning, um, there's nothing actually in the report. But if there were warnings or errors, um, the validation report here would sort of give you a good idea of what those errors and warnings are and how to correct them. So you see here, we're through here and it just tells me to validate event. Um, you'll see all the information is still the same. And what you should get is another button here that says 
Validation checked, everything's good, ready to submit the report. But I'm not getting that button. You'll see it thinks that there's a warning or an alert. Um, it wants me to fix that and then revalidate the event. However, you saw from the validation report that there wasn't an error. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just hit refresh. And when I hit refresh, you'll see now I get the option to release the event for submission. So I run through the process, everything is good, and we're ready to now release this event for submission. I'm gonna go ahead, release event for submission, takes me to another page, US Chess Federation. I gotta compute how much my rating fees were, $7 for this particular event. And then obviously as the tournament director, I need to check this box that says I accept responsibility for the correctness of this report as the chief tournament director, which I do. So I'm going to hit release event for submission. Now what you will normally get here, if you're actually paying for these uh, fees, um, you're the TD or affiliate and you can pay for these fees, um, you'll be taken to a payment screen to allow you to do that. I don't actually pay for these fees, um, US Chess Federation does. So I'm gonna release this event for submission. It then tells me that everything is good and it's waiting for someone to go and pay for this event. You will normally get a payment screen asking you to pay for this and everything. Once you've paid, everything is great and you have submitted the event for rating and you're all done with the entire event.